This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Netflix. Coming up on Destructoid, the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer is the color of a TV tuned to a dead channel. Speaking of dead, Activision's The Walking Dead game doesn't have much survival instinct. And what? Someone on the internet said something about Fallout? That must mean Fallout 4 is confirmed. Get the full story right now on Destructoid Live. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Friday, Max. Happy Friday, I can indeed. still say that, because we still have a show on Friday. Sure, I, you sure can. dashing shirt you are Thank wearing. you. It's, I feel like a Sega Genesis threw up on me, yeah. and that makes me feel good inside. Good. Uh, before anybody, if you get, any of you get excited and angry, it's the, the Fallout 4 is not confirmed, so don't just like get crazy and I type mean, that in all caps on the computer. Just, that's much awful. Is. So it is a Friday, and that is the most fun day of the week, according to scientists. And scientists. your shirt. Uh-huh, and my shirt. Um, and we want you guys to have fun, so we have some prizes for you. And by you, I mean those of you who are watching us live. If you're watching the recording of this, please cover your ears while the, while the other children have fun. Uh, this week, we have a prize pile of Steam keys for games from this last Humble Bundle. It's Humble Bundle 7. It is no longer available, so technically these are collector's items. It's, uh, it's games like The Binding of Isaac, Dungeon Defender, Shank 2, Cave Story, Legend of Grimrock. There's even a copy of Indie Game, the movie, in there. And these were kindly donated by Sam, a.k.a. Zombie underscore underscore Ninja on Twitter. So if you want to say nice things, say them to him because he's generous. Um, our internet uh, man-child wrangler, Nick, is in the chat right now. He's, he's a lovely boy. Everyone say hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Uh, he's going to be giving Nick. out these codes at random, so just be cool, you know? Don't make him get upset. He's very sensitive. Let's get on with the show. Let's do that. It's not often, of course, that we get to report on Fallout news on this show, but guess what? We have Fallout news. Everybody shut up. Shut your mouth. Thank you. <clears throat> So voice actor Eric Todd Dellums, who played Three Dog in Fallout 3, made a little announcement on his Twitter the other day to share a tease with Fallout fans about his next project. Hmm. He said, quote, to all my hashtag Fallout 3 and hashtag Three Dog fans, there may be more of the dog coming. Fingers crossed. I'm not going to attempt to say it in his voice because Max already did that for me during our rehearsal. It was now, super racist. Yeah, it was really, really <laughs> racist. Um, now, obviously, one can safely assume that this is some kind of tease leading up to an announcement of Fallout 4, and some have even speculated that it could be related to a Fallout movie, though I wouldn't get your hopes up for that. That's not dumb. that many of you Why probably were, that? but... Um, you know, the player character has never really been the big focus of the Fallout games, so a movie adaptation wouldn't work too well, I don't think. Plus, if you take a look at Bethesda's release history for the Fallout series, we are due for another game this year. I mean, Fallout 3 came out in 2008, Fallout New Vegas came out in 2010. I don't know if you know this, Max, but it's 2013 now. Ooh. We're like overdue, if anything. Um, but I gotta say, as lackluster as that little tease was, it does make for some titillating speculation. For example, we've already heard rumors that Fallout 4 could be set in the futuristic city of Boston. And while the past two games have kept with that kind of 1950s post-war theme, the earlier Fallout games did depict high-tech cities with intelligent robots and computers. So is it really all that unreasonable to assume that Boston might have some cyberpunkish qualities to it? Hmm? Furthermore, what about the players who killed Three Dog in Fallout 3? It's possible that Bethesda could just ignore that and bring his character back anyway, but have we considered the possibility that this could also be a prequel? There's so many options, I don't even what know where to begin. What if he's just like a voice on the radio and they've like made like an AI of him yeah, or something? Yeah, that would be really lame actually, but it, it could be. be. I don't know, he's people, like the supreme leader of like, the world now. I don't know why anybody would want a Fallout movie. That's just like a dumb thing to want. Uh, go watch like Road Warrior. Yeah. Dorks, please. And it, it, uh, also, it's like Hollywood is a little bit more uh, transparent about when they're doing big multi million dollar things. Mm -hmm. um, and if they were doing a Fallout movie, like hearing a minor character like Three Dog announcing, like hinting at it, I mean, it, you, you probably wouldn't hear from him until it had already, you know, the cat was yeah. already out of the bag. Anyway, um, so. Here's the thing. Thank you. You mentioned Cyberpunk. This is a cooler thing about Cyberpunk. Uh, this is one game I'm very excited about. It's Cyberpunk 2077, and I, I keep forgetting I'm excited about it because we haven't like seen the big reveal yet, but here's the big reveal. It's a really slick CG trailer. 
and and I'm I want this game so bad. Um, to catch everyone up, Cyberpunk 2077 is is being made by CD Projekt Red. They're the Polish studio that did The Witcher games. Uh, the new game is based on the classic pen and paper RPG Cyberpunk 2020, and the original creator Mike Pondsmith is actually involved with 2077. The trailer shows off a scantily clad lady, and she's got cybernetic knife hands. Hold on, you're gonna see it in a second. Those are just bullets. Look at her. Look at that sexy lady. And then, oh my goodness, oh no, she's got a knife blades in her hands. Uh, so we saw her in some concept art, and apparently she's a psycho, or an augmented human being, on a rampage after giving herself too many body modifications and performance-altering drugs. So, you know, sort of like a Mickey Rourke kind of situation. Now, the scantily clad babe and the dudes in the armor with the machine guns all being shown in slow motion, that's really not anything too exciting about, you know, in a game trailer, but cyberpunk setting, Night City in the background looks just really, just appropriately grimy. And I, I really like the little details, like the, the civilian clothes that the victims on the ground are wearing. Like, there's one guy in, like, plaid pants and, and blue Doc Martens, and then there's these kind of retro-looking storefronts in the background. I like and that, that font. The, the font is something that gives me a lot of hope. I, I like the font a lot. If, if the game is anything like the font that the game's logo is in, I'm sold. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's a CG trailer. There's not a whole lot to really get a sense of, but I, it's, it's CD Projekt Red, and The Witcher was, like, unapologetic, hard fantasy that didn't dumb itself down. There was, like, so much sex and gore in that, and it was just totally just offensive and, and, and kind of weird. But it, I just, I trust these nutty Polish guys to give Cyberpunk the same treatment and respect. And, uh... Currently, Cyberpunk 2077's release date is when it's ready. We've all heard that before. Uh, and there aren't any platforms listed, but if I had to guess based on what they did with uh, The Witcher 2, this is probably going to be a PC exclusive initially because they like to kind of give those PC guys a nudge, and then it'll probably be released like a, a year later on Microsoft's hmm. next console, maybe? Who knows? Anything could happen. Maybe it'll be on all the consoles at once. Maybe it's a Vita exclusive. Who knows? I'm kidding. It's probably okay. never going to be a Vita exclusive. Okay. Anyway, some keen NeoGAF users managed to spot and translate a secret message that was briefly flashed, very briefly, at the end. Uh, and it reads, We are about to reveal our other project, which is much closer to being completed. And yes, it will also feature a, or be a fully open world game with an intense story. You can probably guess the game we're talking about. On the 5th of February, it will all be clear. So I'm going to guess... Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot 5 by CD Projekt Red is probably the game that they are referring Science to. Science opinion. Yes. I don't know. It's probably Witcher 3, but we're going to have to hang tight till yeah. uh, February 5th. But That's I, cool how I, they, like how they snuck a little thing in there. for yeah. the, I, There's always a fan willing to just like slow down a trailer and look through it frame by frame. Thank God yeah. for those people. And yeah. we'll never do that. Make our job easy. Yeah. So now that the dust has settled on that whole Tomb Raider multiplayer controversy thing, we, should, we thought we'd revisit that controversy oh, by talking about Tomb Raider multiplayer I'll be some over more. here if you need me. Yeah. Destructoid's editor-in-chief Dale North was able to check out some of the game's offerings at CES this year. He wasn't overly impressed by the team deathmatch mode, which he kind of likened to a funky Uncharted meets Far Cry 3, but not as good. That was literally like what he told me about it. Um, but he was pleasantly surprised with the game's rescue mode. In this one, Lara and her friends make up a team of four survivors who are stranded on an island, and they're working against a group of four scavengers, which is the opposing team. The, t the survivors are tasked with finding five medipacks and bringing them back safely to the camp, while the scavengers are basically trying to kill the survivors a total of 20 times and like, they'll respawn and stuff. So the first side to succeed in their goal before 10 minutes wins the match. Pretty simple rules. Um, the two teams do have some slightly different play styles though. They each have different we weapon loadouts and specialties. So for example, the survivors get to choose from mostly melee weapons like a tomahawk, um, but then they can use skills like their survival instinct, which lets them spot enemies from far away. So it's kind of a give and take. They all said that the maps for this mode, in particular the chasm one, are packed full of obstacles like zip lines and various traps you can use to capture enemies. There's even sandstorms that'll occasionally roll through, giving one team a visibility advantage over the other, sort of like they did in Uncharted 3's multiplayer, but with a lady instead Ooh. of a dude. Yeah. Um, overall, it seems like a pretty good, if not standard, multiplayer offering, but the inclusion of vertical traversal and environmental obstacles really does go a long way towards making this feel 
at least like it fits in with the Tomb Raider canon. So if you guys want more of Dale's hands-on impressions or any information about Tomb Raider's multiplayer or single player even, you can find all of that over on Destructoid.com. Actually, this month's issue of Official Xbox Magazine also had a couple hints about the game's third mode, which they haven't revealed yet, but what is rumored to be called Cry for Help and it's supposed to be all about adventure and discovery rather I hope, than I hope it's, shooting. it's based on that initial E3 reveal trailer where it's just Lara Croft like falling like through moaning. a cave and just moaning. Yeah. Ah! yeah. It's, you gotta have like a like a rock band mic. Mm -hmm. Just do like sing, scream along. Be... Hey, the name Cry for Help would be appropriate for yeah. that idea. Cry, little sister. No. Okay, so um, you guys remember that trailer for The Walking Dead Survival Instinct that showed up online and everyone was like, this game looks crappy, it's so bad, and then it turned out it was actually just really early game footage and some fan had cut it together into a fake trailer and we were all like, oh, okay, maybe the game's gonna be good, they're working on it, it's not done yet, that was just early stuff. By the time it comes out, it'll probably be way better presumably this fall when video games are usually released. Well, a new trailer has shown up online and it's, well, it doesn't, it doesn't really show a whole lot. It, actually, you know what? Let's do this properly like real journalists. How about a nice dramatic reenactment, Tara? Do that. Are you up for that? Uh, yeah, you could do it. Okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, your lines are, uh, you know, you can, okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Check out Activision's new game, The Walking Dead. Survival instinct. Merlin Durrell in a game. What can be better than that? The Walking Dead survival instinct. And scene. Yeah. So, uh, to if you haven't just let's show just show the, the trailer. Yeah. It's check out Activision's new game, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Merlin Durrell in a game. What can be better than that? The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Can be better than that. That's the, okay, just to clarify, that's the whole trailer. You just saw it. That, that is the trailer that came out. This is the trailer announcing the game's release date, which is March 26th, if you didn't catch it there. It's coming out in like two months. It is a retail game they are gonna be charging like full price for. It's coming out in, on March 26th, and, and they want to let people know that by having two men in front of green screens sort of tiredly read lines that they probably were just handed on post-it notes. I cannot wait to review that I'm game. I'm so stoked about how <laughs> much of a train wreck Honestly, this game they is. they should have just kept the first trailer. Like, that, the first gameplay trailer that got released was better than yeah, this one. and that's really... And they uh, probably paid more to make this one yeah. because of the actors. I would, be, I would be so impressed if they were like, actually, that was a fan cut trailer. Some fans <laughs> interviewed them at, a, at an event. At and a they, public that's toilet. That's not official at all. It looks they like They cornered them outside yeah. of a, a, a Denny's. I don't... Um, yeah, so also, did you catch that it's coming to the Wii U? Cause we didn't either. They just threw that in at the end of that trailer. So yeah. I am excited about this video game that is yeah. coming out. That should be an interesting one. That is one. a just a desperate grasp for money that on Activision parts. I think just don't probably you don't want to probably not buy that game. Just 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 play it safe, gang. Uh, anyway, speaking of money and the, the desire to have it, we need to read a word from our sponsor Let's right do now. That. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you may have noticed by the fact that you're watching our show on the internet. Uh, we are in the future, and thankfully in the future, there are tons of other things that you can watch over the internet, such as Netflix. Netflix streams unlimited movies and TV shows directly to your home, whether you've got a compatible, or to your home or wherever the hell you are, if you've got a compatible device, an internet connection, like a, uh, uh, a Mac, a PC, a 360, a PS3, a Wii, a Wii U, a Vita, a 3DS, or any kind of Android or iOS device, you probably have a machine that can run Netflix. So there's, there's really, it's, there's no reason not to give it a shot. It is cheap, fast, and easy. For a free trial membership, head to netflix.com slash destructoid and sign up. Netflix isn't available worldwide, but it just became available in the UK and Ireland as well as in Scandinavia. So again, netflix.com slash destructoid. Go check it out. It'll automatically redirect to the, the country where you live using the magic of the internet. It's a free membership. It helps support our show. Merlin Durrell. Merlin Durrell. <laughs> Oh, back to real video game news. Um, so CES is officially over, thank God, which means the last bit of news is still trickling down on our faces. You guys actually might remember around this time last year was when Razer debuted their PC gaming tablet, Project Fiona, which you astutely likened to an Adele CD sandwiched between two Luna bars. That was me being a journalist and saying that Fiona yes. is a woman's name. Yes, journalism at its finest. Oh, there we are with hair. 
Just so you know, anybody who comments on that saying either one of us has put on weight gets banned. I don't think I have. I hope not. Anyway, um, I guess someone heard your message, Max, because Project Fiona has officially been renamed to something much more manlier. Can I say it? Yes. The Razor Edge. Yes. Uh, the device now runs Windows 8 instead of Windows 7, and it's going to be selling in two different models starting this quarter. The basic Edge is going to be priced at $9.99, and this comes with an Intel Core i5 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 64 gig hard drive. Meanwhile, the Edge Pro will sell for $12.99, and that comes with a Core i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and either a 128 or a 256 gigabyte hard drive. Both of those models ship with the same graphics card, which is an NVIDIA GT 640M LE, and they both have roughly the same uh, packaging. It's a 10.1 inch display, so it's pretty light. Dale says it's under two pounds, so. Um, when we first saw Project Fiona, it wasn't clear whether or not you would be able to remove those uh, mount those controllers that come the mounted on the side. Yeah, the like Luna bars. Yeah. Um, but now it looks like the system won't even be shipping with those at all. In fact, all separate, all accessories are going to be sold separately, and there will be a few different options on how you choose to play. Um, you can use it alone, which again is how it's going to ship, um, just as a standalone tablet, although your games would be pretty limited if you were using the touchscreen only. Uh, conversely, you can use it with the gamepad dock, which mounts the controllers on the side and kind of slides into the back there. Um, Dale played around with that too, said it was a little bit heavy for extended lap use. Uh, the actual tablet isn't heavy itself, but when you add the contro controllers on it, it can get pretty tiring holding it up. Also, that uh, gamepad dock is $249, which is like, why just hook in an Xbox controller? You can do that, there's USB ports. Um, Dale actually recommends using it with a TV dock since it has uh, HDMI out and four USB ports on the back, so you can mount it to your TV and then use it just like a console for example, with huh. Steam's big picture mode, which is really cool. Um, and then the TV dock also costs $99. So I was a little disappointed to see that the accessories were so expensive, but as far as sheer no, power razor. goes, yeah. Dale said, um, this is definitely better than your standard run-of-the-mill run Windows tablet since it's been specifically optimized for gaming. Obviously, it has a better video card too. And its innards are roughly comparable to a standard gaming PC. So it's still an attractive prospect uh, for those of you who are desiring a little more portability with your console games. So if you guys want to read his full hands-on impressions over at destructoid.com, um, you can do that. And you can also go check out the video that Adam Sessler did at CES this year all about the Razer Edge. Um, and hey, while you're at it, go check out the video that Anthony Carboni did with uh, the Oculus Rift, which is another amazing piece of technology at CES this year. Um, he also chatted with the founder of the company, which is quite an entertaining video. So uh, you can find both of those on youtube.com slash rev3games. Oh yeah, and uh, you know what's happening next week is the first reviews of 2013. That's happening. Um, oh my gosh, that, oh wait, no, I'm not, damn, I'm not the first one. That's Adam. Mm. Yeah, DMC Devil May Cry, the new one where he doesn't have white hair or whatever, is, is going up on Monday at 12.01 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, that is Jim Sterling is going to have a written review over on Destructoid.com, and Rev3 Games is going to have a video review over on Rev3 Games, courtesy of Mr. Adam Sessler himself. And I'm going to have my review of, of the third Shh. Borderlands DLC. No one cares. It's going to be awesome. It's not a game. That's just like extra. They're like, oh, we're just, uh, it's, the, it's the kid running behind the teacher as the teacher's driving away the car. It's like, hey, it's, it's already game of the year for everybody. And the kid's like, I got my homework. And this is... It took me like 15 hours to write. You're a slow writer. I'm really slow. You're a slow writer. Merlin Durrell. Uh, let's talk Merlin Durrell. <laughs> We're gonna take some questions from our audience. Merlin Durrell is the... Would PD's you like to see... This is Merlin Durrell down here. I drew a picture of Merlin Durrell. He's the third Dixon brother. He will be the star of the upcoming Walking Dead survival instinct, and he is uh, very special. He's the third brother of, of uh, Daryl and, and Merle. He looks like Chucky. Merlin Durrell! <laughs> I just admit, I, like the guy is in the show. He's been on the show for you know three seasons, and they're like, "Yeah, you say uh, Merle and Daryl," and he's like, "Merle and Daryl in a I, game. What could be better?" I just can't. I can't believe that they chose to get actors and nothing else in that trailer, and then they couldn't even pronounce the lines right, and they were like, "Well, that's a wrap. Great job, everyone. Like, good shoot." Nobody thought to like reshoot that and maybe pronounce the name of his own character correctly. They also, I believe, did voices for the game. They sound invested. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let's take some questions from our lovely patient audience listening to us talk about Merlin Durrell. Uh, let's see, we had questions about Fallout 4, of course. Fallout 4 with a lot of question marks behind it. 
Sirian the Sirian the Hedgehog says, should there be another annoying character, such as the annoying fan in Oblivion or Cicero in Skyrim? That is an Elder Scrolls question. We are talking about Fallout. But they said. Do you think Fallout? This is from ANCXX Soldier. Just write a just write normal words, kids. <laughs> I'm not. This isn't a game genie code. Uh, do you think Fallout 4 will use a new engine or the Skyrim? That is another. Elder Scrolls God, as just, half a, uh, actually, Do I'm, some self-editing before it you would make a lot of read sense the if, if they use the creation engine. In, what uh, do you think Bethesda could do to improve on Fallout 4? Ask Steve Ono the commando. I was answering the last question. That was actually a valid question. I was joking. Oh, I didn't hear you because yeah. I was too busy reading. I was well, too busy listening to the sound of Do you of think my own Fallout thoughts? 4 will be a next-gen release? Well, okay. Let's analyze here. If they announce the Xbox at E3, then they'll have to wait until then to announce Fallout 4. But why would they be teasing this six months beforehand? Assuming that's what he's teasing. There's interesting timing. Unless they announce the Xbox earlier, say at GDC, which is quite soon, they then that have, would make a lot of sense. They would have a lot of dumb money already from pre-orders if they announced a, you know, a game now, yeah. you know, just ahead of, ahead of the game. But uh, if they were gonna announce it before a console announcement, I feel like they would have probably done it at the VGAs. Mm -hmm. They announced Skyrim at the VGAs, and that yeah. was the one that came out. So I, I think we're probably gonna hear about that at E3. We're gonna, have a, we're gonna have an exciting E3 this year. I'm just gonna answer all these questions about Fallout because that's all I really care about. The Bionic Fury asks, Max or Terra, how will you do your first playthrough of Fallout 4, super good or super evil? I usually tend towards good and then like choose like maybe a few responses that are really evil and I'll just like kill somebody if Why I don't like the way they look at me. Why does it have to be one or the other with you people? It's always one or the, it's always like, which is better, this or this? It's like, no man, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna play it sort of like chaotic good. It's kind of, I mean, when I played Fallout the first time, I was I was really nice. I didn't want to be mean to anybody, and then I killed that entire town that had the vampire family in it. Not that where the vampires are living. I went back to the town. I was like, "Hey, I found your vampire kid. He's a little asshole. Lives in a subway station." And they're like, "Oh, thank you." And I was like, "I'm bored." And just, yeah. Then I just was evil, and then I finished the game, and it was like Ron Perlman telling me I was an asshole. So, yeah. video games, you guys. Um, Joshua Williams said regarding Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider story mode will be amazing. Multiplayer is something I will never even try. Put the effort from multiplayer towards making the story even better than it will already be. Well, Eidos Montreal is handling the multiplayer and Crystal Dynamics is doing the single player. So this is, they're not related at all. So don't think that one is necessarily taking away from the other because- I wish Crystal Dynamics was true. a game instead of a studio. It does. I'd play that game, Crystal yeah. Dynamics. It also sounds like a band name. That's true. Uh, let's see, Walking Dead, The Curse of the Shitty Bad Job. Nick writes funny things in here. Uh, let's see, this Walking Dead game is going to suck so much. I wanna see it. Yep, that's pretty much this game, I think. People are agreeing. Anyway, um, instead of we talk about Merlin Durrell a little bit more, let's uh, let's wrap up the show, because you guys don't wanna hear about Merlin Durrell. Uh, that's all the, the time we have for today. We're gonna it be is. back here on Tuesday, not Monday or Wednesday, but Tuesday, because that's our new thing. We do it on Tuesday and on Friday. So just go watch us on Tuesday, but watch our other videos that we mentioned. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitter. She's Tara Longest. I am Max Scoville, and the show is Detoid Show, and we will post things as they are finished on those respective social media outlets. Um, you got anything you want to say? No, not you at all. The, you got the giggles? No, just... No? Did I say something stupid besides everything I said today? I don't know. I all don't right. even know why I'm laughing, honestly. Okay, Just well, thinking of Merlin Durr. Okay, you guys have a good week. Don't do not do anything bad. You know, wear a condom. Be safe. We love you. Merlin Durrell. Merlin Durrell. Merlin Durrell in a game. What can be better than that?